Hi, I'm Jim. Welcome back to my shop as we continue the build of our my field, larger, hopefully not leaking fuel tanks for my Merlin GT. My plan had been to build the second tank over the winter. I already installed the first tank um, and incorporate some changes based on what I learned building the first tank. Uh, yeah, it didn't get done last winter, but uh, I'm trying to get started on it now. So the changes I want to make, um, well, to recap, the original tank, the original tank, when they made it, you know, they took the sides, the sides and the, and the top, and they just did a, you know, a TIG weld along this edge, and that weld kept cracking, I fixed each tank two or three times. Um, the problem is, I think, that uh, when they did that, when I cut a section out of the tank, uh, and I showed this in an earlier video, you know, there was really not much penetration this direction in the weld. You know, it was a really shallow weld nugget going this way, and that's pretty weak, plus the top was oil canning, okay? Um, so the tank I have in the airplane right now, I did a butt weld to, you know, so I can get a more weld bead, more weld nugget, uh, you know, sturdier weld. That was a pain in the neck to keep things lined up and, you know, as you weld, as the guy was welding it, it tried to move and had a lot of problems. What I want to do this time, since I have the bead roller and I'm rolling beads into the tops and bottom skins of the tank to keep it stiff, is I can also roll the joggle into it, okay, and do a lap joint and that's a lot easier to weld and what I can do is assemble the whole tank with either Clico or sheet metal screws through the flange through this extra flange here. Um, I didn't want to do that the first time because I was concerned about all the holes that would have to be welded shut. Um, I think welding the holes shut is less diddle darking than, than trying to keep things lined up with the butt weld so plan for the second tank is, is a lap weld assemble it with sheet metal screws or Clecos, weld it, take the screws and Clecos out, patch the holes. Um, I've been practicing that a little bit. It's not a big deal. Just a drop of filler and spread it around and let it float right in. It seems to work. Um, the other thing is if we look at this piece here, it's got a lot of um, potato chipping and you can kind of feel it going back and forth. You know, it's got a twist in it this way and I can pull it out, but it, it you know, you have, to, you have to work at it. And that was a problem getting everything lined up square, flat, straight in the last tank. I think having the flanges and the lap weld and putting it together on the bench cold with Clecos or screws will let me help make it easier to get a flat square tank assembled then weld it while it's already in a flat square state and that'll make it easier. The other thing in studying about rolling beads you know it tends to distort the metal and you get stretching and potato chipping. Uh, what I've read is a lot of people or what I've seen is a lot of people suggest you know like using their pneumatic planishing hammer to do a little pre-stretch and stuff. I don't have one of those. <laughs> but another video I saw, the guy said, well, roll it the wrong direction, the bead the wrong direction a little bit first, and then come back and roll it the right way. You just get that pre-stretch and reduce distortion. I think that might help. Um, my concern was if I roll it and roll it the other way, is that too much work hardening? Is it going to give me problems? So I had this piece of scrap here where I had rolled it, rolled the bead projecting out this way completely, and then I came back and re-rolled the entire bead to be this direction and uh, I don't see any signs of distress in the metal so so I think I'm going to roll the beads a little bit the wrong way and then come back roll them the other way and see if I can't do a better job of rolling the beads to stiffen the bottom and top without quite as much distortion and the final thing is modifications to the bead roller. 
when I first got it, um, these were sharp square corners, okay? And the rollers were machined and not very smooth. When I, and I tried it on a piece of scrap, I think it was 2024, and instead of rolling a bead, it cut it into strips. <laughs> uh, not good, right? So I've taken these and rounded off all these corners. I've polished them a little. I didn't go crazy, but they should be less textury than they were when I started, okay? And same thing with these uh, rollers here that I'm going to use to roll the joggle for the lap seam. I polished them up a bit, round these edges off a bit, and that all seems to be working. So now I've got a ton of video from the first tank. I think mostly this video is going to be from making the second tank because I don't even remember what I recorded. I think the focus here is going to be on rolling a top and bottom, you know, getting this these pieces made. Um, hopefully with less potato chipping and nicer bends on the ends. So we'll get started on that. We're getting ready to roll out the bottom side. Uh, you know, basically the tank, this is, this is the bottom. I'll fold these ends up on these lines. Actually, we're looking at the outside, so it'll be folded down relative to this. And that'll make like half of the back, half of the front, and that way we end up with one seam on the front, one seam on the back, and then the seams around the sides. I've taken my precision plans, yeah, whatever, <laughs> taken my precision plans and I've laid out the center line of each bead, and I've also put lines one inch either side of the center line. That will line up with the edge of the bead roller as I actually roll the beads. Uh, made some notes on here. This is the front. This is the outside of the bottom. This is the inboard side So I don't do something stupid like, you know, make a mirror image or make it inside out um, That's just the kind of thing that's easy to do. So if I label all this then I'm less likely to get confused on the other side I've labeled this is the inside of the tank um, So my plan is to have the beads convex on the inside sticking up so the beads will go like this on the inside but I'm first going to roll them a little bit the other way so the from the inside of the tank they're concave and then I'll flip it over and roll them um, the way they're going to finish you know that pre-stretch idea we'll see how that works and then these will be the actual bend lines that I'll use when I bend these up because this is on the inside uh, this, plat this, this sheet here from Aircraft Spruce still has the, the plastic on it. Um, the stuff I bought at Speedy Metals came without plastic. I'm leaving the plastic on and putting the marks on the plastic. I don't know if that's going to survive the rolling process or if I'm going to have to lay the whole stupid thing out again. But we'll burn that bridge when we come to it. Okay, so let's set up in the bead roller and see what happens. Okay. So I've clamped a piece of metal with the lip on it here as a stop. See how that works. Generally I think this is easier if you have two people, but I don't, so we'll see. So I'll crank this down a scientifically calibrated amount and roll my bead. clever person would have remembered how much did he tighten that the first time, wouldn't he? Huh. 
Okay, two more to pre-stretch and then we'll flip it over. I have no idea if this is the right amount, but what are you going to do? Okay, so my concern is this is going to want to roll off that hump. Uh, I thought, you know, I've got the relatively flat rollers for rolling flanges. thought about rolling this flat first, but well, I'm going to try it and we'll just see what happens. Get centered there, crank it down about that much. Yeah, that's not working. Not taking the plastic off might help. Let's give, I'll give it one more try. No, it just went sideways. Okay, so I'm going to have to flatten this. And then if that doesn't work, we'll take off the plastic and relay out everything. Woohoo! Okay, I left the convex die on the bottom roller, and this flat is centered over that convex thing. And I'm just going to try and flatten this out. That actually appears to be working, believe it or not. Let's not get again, take too much of a bite, keep it simple or smooth. It still wants to slide, but it's a lot better. Okay, and I'm taking a smaller amount at one time. Yeah. You can see how potato chippy this is at the moment. Well, let me zoom you out. You can see how potato chippy this is at the moment. If I can keep this straight, once I get a concave okay. okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to take the plastic off, lay out all my lines on the metal, transfer them as best I can. Uh, it's just too slippery and I can't, I can't control it. So um, I'll be back. Okay, so if I peel back a little bit, I can mark where that line is.
Those lines I don't really need, but I do need these bend lines. And this is the back. And this is going to bend up. Yes, because this is the inside. side in board. Okay. I'm going to catch the center line just to have it. So that's my process and uh, again I'll bring you back. So I transferred the marks. I already made one pass. Um, yeah I can control it now. <laughs> Much better uh, with metal on metal. So I gotta go back the other way. can now pretty much control where it's going as long as I don't get greedy So that's your opportunity to learn from my mistakes. Don't leave the plastic on. speed doesn't come out symmetrical. There's a lot more roll here where the die is longer than there is on this side. So what I do is I'll turn the dies around in the um, on the rollers and then get another pass after. I'll probably do this one, turn it around, fix those, and then do the outside ones I think. Okay, so I'm going to try just rolling this with the bead uh, on the, you know, undoing the previous pre-stretch roll. Uh, see if the fact that I got metal on metal gives me enough control or if I need to, um, if I need to do something, if I need to do like I did before with the flat roller first. Get lined up. Some pressure on it. Okay, that worked. I'm going to flip the rollers over and uh, go over both of those. Okay, got that turned around. Okay, there it is. I got four beads rolled. It didn't take too long. 
Uh, it doesn't sit perfectly flat. Uh, there's still some some extra metal through here. But it's pr I I feel like it's improved over the last one. It's hard to say for sure because it's been about a year since I um, made the last one. We'll see what happens when we bend it. Okay, um, I just cut this to width and before I bend the ends up <laughs> I just cut this to width and before I bend the ends up I need to roll the flange so I can do my lap joint that you uh, mentioned earlier. Okay, so um, I got this set up and this is the bottom piece. I'm going to roll the, the, the joggle on all four sides and I got to make sure this is the inboard face, the inside of the tank face so that comes up because the tank fits, the bottom fits inside everything. Uh, it's lining up with the back edge of that roller gives me three quarters of an inch of of joggle, which I just did an experiment here. Other than that, not very exciting, so I'm going to roll that. It's going to complicate bending the ends up a little bit, um, but we'll just have to deal with it. The previous one, previous tank, I bent the ends first and then trimmed it to width, and then, you know, made it, you know, trimmed it to width to give me the butt joints, which was a lot fussier. But I got a little bit more wiggle room here with the with the uh, lap joint in the joggle, so keep rolling. So I'm thinking in the corner here I just need to roll it up to that and then I'll have to do some hand work to carry that around. If I roll that all the way to the end it'll mess this up right here. Okay. Now when I roll these it's going to leave me with some hand work here in the corners but I think that shouldn't be too bad. Start there. there and then we'll get the hammer and dollies out. Okay, hopefully I remember the plus report because this is the last corner. I want to take so I want to flatten this ridge, bring that up this way. Don't assume I know what I'm doing here. Okay. Should work. Uh, you know, welding it'll 
change everything anyhow. And you can see how flat this thing is after all that the beads and the stretching. I don't know. Uh, I don't know that the pre-stretching did much. Okay, so now I got to modify my bending thing so I can not screw these up when I bend on those lines. Okay, so there it is. I've notched this underneath and on the end so it doesn't interfere with the uh, with the joggle. This is just some angle bolted down and piano hinge and a couple layers of wood and I don't know, may, might work. I haven't tried it yet. This is uh, this is it. This is the first trial. See if this works. It may work, it may fail miserably. That actually seemed to work. Amazing. Uh, let me check the angle. Wow. Yeah, way easier than the last one. I'll sh when I had it clamped down, I had this scrap underneath the joggle here, so that didn't get squished. But uh, that is not bad. Um, turn back. I don't know that this is any flatter than the first one. I don't think the pre-stretching did much. I don't know if I didn't do it enough, if I did it too much, if it was just not going to work in the first place. I don't know. But uh, I'll mark off where this bend is here. And then I can bend that, and then we can mark off where it bends here and bend to the actual end pieces as opposed to just measurements. Ah, not long enough, okay. C-clamps it is. No doubt you're familiar with the expression where there's a hillbilly is a way, right? That should be all it takes. Okay, so it's bent. Um, you can see how it, uh, you know, yeah, potato chips there. It's not it doesn't take a lot of effort to get it, force it flat and force it in. But um, I'm sure you can imagine what a pain it was to keep all this stuff lined up when I was trying to do butt welding and keep it all flat and square. Um, I don't think that the pre-rolling that I did here made any difference um, so I probably won't do that again I'm going to make the baffle for here and then I can Clico that into place and Clico the ends on and see how it looks at that point so I think I think it's going to work I mean, it may look kind of yeah <laughs> may look pretty wonky at this point, but it doesn't, it's certainly not worse than the first tank. I'm more confident now than I was at this point with the last tank. Let's put it that way. Okay, so I got the baffle kind of laid out here. I got a bend line for a flange in the bottom. There will be a flange on the top. This is extra material. Uh, flanges on each end, and it'll sit inside the tank, and I'll use, I'll put some rosette welds. Uh, top, bottom, and on the sides to hold it in place. Uh, the other thing is, you know, the tank, we rolled all those beads, so those beads sit here and would, you know, won't let this sit down. So I'm just going to take a hole saw, essentially drill that through there, so I'll make a bigger, significantly bigger than the bead hole that'll let the fuel run to the back. Uh, corners I'll trim off here, just so they don't interfere with the... Um, uh, 
all the joggles and extra material there. The main idea, some random holes here too, the main idea here is not so much to prevent fuel slosh as it is to prevent oil canning and stiffen up the tank. Okay, so I'm ready to drill these holes for the uh, ribs or whatever you want to call them. Um, so when I made this bench with all these tools, I tried to leave enough room for the old air compressor underneath and it was too tall and made everything too tall and so now if this decides to helicopter, it's about the right height to decapitate me, so hopefully that won't happen. Um, yeah, you never know. Okay, so my bending setup doesn't doesn't work for these uh, narrow tabs, this direction, not this direction. Um, I could probably bend some of these underneath there, but there's not much to stick underneath this board. It tends to come up, and so we'll just do it the old-fashioned way. dent in the baffle. Um, to double check the height and I can bend the ends and uh, we'll put it in place and uh, I'll get the ends bent then we'll I'll attach it to the tank bottom put the ends on and see how things look as we start to assemble. Okay at this point um, these are spaced properly they're flat on the table this whole thing is square. I got some Clecos in it. The only thing that isn't perfectly fitting is, you know, I got a little oil can here. I think I can put some screws in there and take that out um, without screwing everything else up. I'm not sure what's going to happen when I take these clamps off, which are holding the, the bottom down flat on the table. I guess we'll find out, eh? I am really liking the way this is going together compared to the previous tank where I had to, you know, fight it to trying to hold all these pieces flush.
Okay, I'm not far off. Uh, I need to get about a sixteenth, so this right now it's flush just about with the top here. It needs to go just underneath that so that I can set the top on there. And then, because the top ends up flush here, fudge these bends down at the bottom just a little bit. Okay. I think I'm going to put a couple more screws in back here and here so this really holds its shape before I pick it off, unclamp it from the table. Because I need to. I need the workbench to tweak this, and then I'll be back. So to make sure this pulls up tight, I'm drilling the skin in this part of the flange to be a bit thicker, and then I can, uh, you know, just do the first layer. Put in the sheet metal screw, it draws it up nice and tight. Or it would if I had a screwdriver. So it still likes to twist, but I can clamp it down and I don't have to fight with it. And then when I make the top, obviously I'll have it clamped down. And then, you know, when I attach them together along here, along the front and back, that will stop it from twisting 100% and we'll all be good. Okay, so there's the baffle sitting in place. I got screws in the sides. I put some holes through the bottom. I'll flip this over, put the screws in. Um, I'm thinking this is probably a good time to wrap this video because I still need to make the top. Uh, I don't know how much of the bead rolling and stuff I'm going to record. It remains to be seen. If I have to make the top yet, fit it, put all of the fittings in, and then of course weld it so we're not going to get all that into one video so with that thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the flip side